Hi, welcome to the Signal Pad. In this episode, I have a quick video for you guys, and we wanted to talk about some of these portable power supplies. Now, while I was thinking about this, uh, Dave Jones actually released from EEV Blog, released a video talking about all the different kinds and versions of these power supplies, and he did a great job showing you the pros and cons of different types of them, whether they are buck and boost or only one type. And it was great to see every possible combination of these things that are out there, and there are tons of these. Now, this particular one that I have is the model DPH-3205, and it's like a mid-range model that can do from 0 to 30 volt output, 5 amp and 160 watts, of course not with the heatsink that it has on there. But the nice thing about it is that it's a boost and buck converter, meaning that whatever power supply voltage you give it, it can go above and below it, of course. Now I've been looking for a portable power supply, and honestly, this is the best option that I can think of. All you need to do is buy yourself one of these battery packs. Now these are the battery packs that are supposed to do uh, do car starters. If your car is, uh, your battery is, is dead, you can actually jump start your car with these. Now, this is not one of the really good ones that actually is capable of doing it. This is just a cheap one that I bought uh, for about $15 from eBay delivered. And uh, I wasn't expecting to start my car with it. But what is nice about it is that it still has fairly good capacity and fairly high current driving capability. Just not a hundreds of amps to start your car. And it shows you the capacity that he has left. He has, you know, USB port and a flashlight. But they are so cheap and they do give you 12 volts and 12 volts is a great voltage to provide to this particular power supply it's somewhere in the middle of you know its range and therefore you can then have a very nice portable power supply and it will last forever uh, just being turned on like this on, on, on a battery this has been on you know for a long time now i've been running a lot of experiments with it draining it and you know we're still sitting at 11.75 volts and this is one of the nice things about is that it does give you the input voltage so you can monitor it and make sure you don't uh, over drain your battery and if you buy a really good one of these you wouldn't even have to worry about that because it will have its own protection so having said that, I'm not going to go into the details of the menu, this and that. That's not the purpose of this video, and there's plenty of those available, except that I really do recommend getting one of these for yourself if you're looking for a portable power supply or if you just want a bench power supply and you want to hook it up to a fixed 12-volt, uh, let's say, computer power supply. But this is great for these type of jobs, and I'll leave a link for you guys where you can get it from Banggood. I don't get any benefits from that. It's just something that uh, you can easily find out uh, where to buy these, and there's tons of different versions of it, of course. So you can go and check it out. The purpose of this video is to explore the noise that comes from it. So obviously this is a DC-DC converter and therefore it's going to be noisy. It's going to have some switchy noise associated with it and for a lot of applications it, it may not matter at all. But I wanted to know what is a simple and easy way to uh, reduce its noise. Now, filtering it, not so easy. It already has a lot of filtering. There's only so much you can do. Well, you can obviously put a voltage regulator at its output, but then it wouldn't be uh, following the voltage you set here. Then you would have just a fixed voltage regulator in that case, and you may as well not have this. So I wanted to find a way, a simple way, to build something that follows this voltage to some extent, so you can still have a variable output that you can set from here with some offset with respect to this one. So let's, before we do that, and before we talk about that, let's look at the noise of it by itself. And measuring the noise of this is a little tricky, but luckily I have something cool to measure the noise with it. So let's take a look and see what comes out of it. So to measure the noise, I'm going to use the Keysight N7020 PowerRail Probe. Now I've done a full review of this, a teardown of it, and showed you why it is such an important component for power analysis. It's a fantastic two gigahertz bandwidth uh, PowerRail Probe with a huge offset voltage that you can set on it. Definitely recommend checking out the review of this uh, so you can see what it's capable of. So this is ideal for our situation because we can uh, enter in the offset voltage. In this case, we're going to be testing at 15 volts. And then we have a dynamic range of the oscilloscope here, which has a very low noise input and 50 ohm, and then we can measure the noise. So let's go ahead and enable the power supply. And for a moment, let's ignore all of this. The only thing that matters is that the voltage from the power supply comes over here and is connected to this load. And this load is a 20 ohm resistor, I believe. I forget what the value was. It's a 25 ohm resistor and a big heat sink so that we don't have much of a, th uh, a thermal drift on that. And then we're going to measure the, the power supply voltage directly. And you can see I've just connected it directly across the power supply. Everything else, let's ignore for the moment. We'll talk about that in just a second. So I can go ahead and enable it. Let's go ahead and enable it. Here's the output enabled. You can see we are drawing about 9.2 watts, 616 milliamps. So it's under, you know, reasonable load. As you can see, the battery has no problem at all. It's wonderfully portable. So let's go and see what we see on the oscilloscope. Now on the oscilloscope, we're going to see the waveform and check it out. 
looks pretty neat. And uh, what we're doing is we're looking at the waveform on a 20 millivolt per division scale centered around 14.9 volts. Now, it's not exactly 15 volts because there's some IR drop in the cables that I have connected as a result of my setup, so I'm not correcting for that. But anyway, you can see that we have quite a lot of noise coming out of this. And here's the FFT of the noise going from DC to 1 megahertz. And in this case, we can see various tones from switching, some interesting noise a shaping happening here, which seems to be drifting a little bit across time. And uh, yeah, so these are all the different uh, tones there. So you can go ahead and measure various tones and see what their values are. So we can, for example, uh, let's put some markers on this one. And let's just do just the X ones are fine. Just we can see the, the voltage or the, the frequencies there. So let's put this one at DC. So you can see, for example, yeah, this one is sitting at around 68 kilohertz. And the next one is going to be sitting at 138 kilohertz and so on. So there's all these different tones uh, sitting directly on our power supply. So it's quite noisy and this is to be expected. And I'm also measuring the peak to peak value of the noise here. And you can see the peak to peak value of the noise. Let me clear that to make sure we're not measuring anything that's uh, from the startup. There you go, about 66 millivolts peak to peak is the total noise sitting at the output. And the standard deviation is a 1.7 millivolt and so on and on and you can measure and analyze that. By the way, this is a, I'm capturing a huge amount of data, a huge amount of points in order to get a good resolution on the FFT. And this is what we would expect. For a lot of applications, this wouldn't matter. And you'd be perfectly fine by using it the way it is. But how can we do something that can track the power supply voltage and at the same time reduce the noise? So here's my little solution to solve this noise problem. Now, this is by no means the only way to do this. This is just for educational purposes, not the most efficient way, but it is an interesting thing to take a look at. So I'm going to be using an op-amp, not just any op-amp, but a power uh, op-amp, which means that it can provide a lot of output current. So here in this op-amp, I'm using it in unity feedback. It means that no matter what voltage shows up at the positive terminal, the output of the op-amp is going to try and follow that voltage. Now remember, in this case, two things are changing at the same time. We want to change the output of this op-amp, which is our output of our new power supply, but the VDD to the op-amp is also changing, and the VDD is going to be coming from our DC-DC converter. So we want to attract this with respect to VDD while keeping the op-amp in its linear mode of operation. So in order to do that, I have built this little circuit at the positive terminal of the op-amp. And there's just a VDD, which is the same as this VDD. So these VDDs are going to be moving up and down together as we change the DC-DC converter output voltage. And then there is a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a 4 volt Zener diode, and then a 50 kilo ohm resistor to ground. This 50 kilo ohm is going to create a little bit of trickle current in this path. So we have actually the Zener voltage appearing uh, and, uh, and activated which means that the voltage here is going to be VDD minus the Zener voltage. So it's going to lag by 4 volt the VDD. So as I change the VDD up and down, this is going to always lag 4 volts be below it. And this VDD is going to go up and down too. But if this is always less than that, we should have no problem for this op-amp to track this. Now, why did I choose 4 volts? We're going to take a look at the data sheet of the part I'm using, and that's going to make it very clear. At the same time, I have a big capacitor here that will filter this. That's why I have this one kilo ohm resistor over here so that we can filter this at least with respect to the ground of our power supply and make this node quiet so the noise of the power supply doesn't enter this op-amp. This means that by tracking this VDD minus 4 volts at the output here, we are taking advantage of the power supply rejection ratio of the op-amp while it's still operating in a linear region and then have an output voltage. Now, of course, like I said, you don't want to use a voltage regulator because then that's going to give you a constant voltage. That's not what you're looking for. I wanted something to track the output of my power supply so that as I change that, I have a variable power supply again that's much cleaner. So let's go ahead and take a look at the data sheet and then we can do some measurements. So here's the Burr Brown operational amplifier that I was showing you just a moment ago that I'm using as a voltage follower. So as you can imagine, a voltage follower op-amp is a very traditional, very basic circuit, but here in this case, the power supply to the op-amp is also changing. That's what's coming out of our DC-DC converter. That's what's coming from our variable power supply, which means our power supply voltage is changing. And at the same time, we want to generate a voltage that tracks the power supply voltage. Now, there are some limitations. Now, this is a fairly good op-amp. It has an output 
high output current it can do two amps and so on it wide power supply voltages and it needs a plus and minus supply but i'm using ground and a positive supply it doesn't matter everything is relative anyway so it looks good on the surface and here is its a block diagram or I should say it's a functional diagram very simple you can see that the positive and negative uh, inverting terminals of the op amp are visible and plus minus power supply are there quite simple straightforward but once you dig a little bit deeper into the data sheet and you look at the output voltage here you can see the output voltage under let's say half an amp current can come within 3.8 3.1 volt of the positive and negative power supply to the op amp it means that you can't build a voltage follower with this op amp such that the output voltage and the feedback voltage the follower voltage would be the same it's impossible because it cannot reach the power supply remember the power supply voltage is also changing so that's why I'm using a Zener diode to drop down the power supply voltage with a constant value and then use that as my uh, feedback uh, voltage into the positive terminal of the op amp and that way we have a gap between the VDD and the output voltage but we're still using the op amp as our main uh, voltage generation circuit. And this way we can get advantage of the power supply rejection of the op amp itself while we are creating a follower. Now, if you go further down, you can clearly see, for example, here, right over here, you can see the power supply rejection of this particular op amp is, is shown at up to about 100 kilohertz. At 100 kilohertz, it doesn't perform very well when we're talking about 30 dB of rejection, but around here in the lower frequency ranges, you are perfectly fine. You have lots and lots of power supply rejection. This will clean up the signal coming out of it. So we can go ahead and do that measurement and take a look and see how that actually happens. But the principle is very straightforward. We are All we're doing is making a, a non-inverting voltage follower where the positive input of the op amp is, has a zener diode voltage drop with respect to the positive power supply. Very simple, but it should be pretty effective. So let's go ahead and measure that and see how it performs. And here is our simple little circuit. You can see all the various components. There are our capacitor, our Zener diode, our uh, Burr Brown operational amplifier there, and the resistors that are there to bias the Zener. Nothing else is going on. I'm actually loading the output of the op amp with the same load I was loading it before. And I also have this little voltage monitor that is connected to the output of the op amp, so we can see the voltage on that. Now here on the little portable power supply that we have here. Right now the power is turned off. I can go ahead and enable the power set to 15 volts and as soon as I turn it on you can see that it's going to take a little bit of time for this to settle because we have to charge this capacitor. This capacitor choice is not the best for this case but this should settle around uh, 11 volts which is 4 volts below 15 and you can see it does. It's quite nice and I can go ahead and change it let's say 1 volt lower. Let's press that and go, let's say, 14 volts. And if I go to 14 volts, this is going to uh, slowly come down uh, to 10 volts. And if I go back to 15 volts, it's going to come back to 11 volts. And similarly, as you change this voltage up to a certain limit, you can go very low because, again, of what I described from the limitation of the output. But you can get your voltage quite nicely. And it's under load, so it's going to take, if I go back out of here, you can see the power consumption is 456 a milliamp, in this case 6.87 watts, and the difference, of course, we are using a constant 25 ohm load. Now we have power supply voltage is 11 volts. Naturally, it's going to take less current. So other than that, we still have a variable power supply, and it's tracking this with an offset on it, but let's take a look at the noise and see if it's any different. And check it out, the difference is huge. The noise is, has come down significantly. You can see all the harmonics and all the tones are gone, except for this hump is still there. And look at it, you can see it, it changes ever so slightly and it comes and goes and it's got some unusual behavior. So I actually figured out where that is from, but I'm gonna leave it as a puzzle to you to see if you can figure out exactly what's going on. But yeah, so this is an interesting little behavior. Most of this noise is actually from that, but you can see we are sitting at you know, 33 millivolts or, or so peak to peak compared to what we had before and all the tones and all the harmonics are gone. And it's much better, of course, to have a broadband noise rather than those peaks, especially in uh, the situations where you would want to um, connect it to a wireless circuit, for example. So yeah, there, there you can see that the concept works and here only we are exploring the concept and this can be hugely Im improved, of course, but something to consider and you can clearly see the effect of the noise uh, on, on the output. And of course the benefit of having this uh, particular power rail probe, which is fantastic. I've used it quite a lot for debugging. So yeah, so there you go, there you have it. And I wanted to just uh, give you a little perspective I had on these power supplies. Again, I really like this. It's quite amazing that you can build a nice portable power supply with just so little money these days and 
and experiment with it and play around with it. So again, I've left the, the link for you guys to take a look. And once again, thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome. And this was just another video before uh, going to a review I'm preparing and some other repairs that I'm preparing. So it's going to be pretty interesting stuff coming up. And I hope you enjoyed this simple little experiment. I'll see you next time.